In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal mysteries on earth, bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full, full measure of your grace for ages unending, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers were in Judea heard that the Gentiles, too, had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times. And then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then, three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us, when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A thirst is my soul for the living God. A thirst is my soul. As the hang longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on 
and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Is my soul for the Lord. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere as a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he had driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they may, might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, in the Acts of the Apostles, and Similarly for us, after the resurrection, um, God has changed our understanding of the law. In some ways, in some aspects, he has widened or, or, or made more liberal um, the gate, right? The gate. Uh, here's an example of through Peter, who's the pope at this point, so the pope, um, he's telling the pope some of these old covenant ritual and dietary laws will be removed. That's what this whole scene is. Peter's eating with Gentiles, uh, the uncircumcised, and he has a vision of prayer. And, and on this sheet that comes down from heaven are all these animals that they would not be able to eat. That's why Peter says, no, no unclean thing has touched my lips because God says, hey, eat, slaughter and eat. And God clarifies to the Pope and therefore to the church, hey, these dietary laws, as well as some other laws, right, like circumcision being necessary to enter the, the fold, the ecclesia, the church, are going to be set aside. They're going to be gotten rid of. Right? They're not important. But other laws, Jesus actually raises the bar on. So while some he lowers and he takes away, dietary stuff some he raises the bar remember he says it used to be that anyone who committed adultery has sinned gravely but now anyone who even thinks adulterous thoughts sins gravely oh man he raised the bar or it used to be if you murdered your brother that was a, a grave sin but now even if you like think about it right he's raising the bar on certain commandments right the ten commandments 
the things that will not change and never change, and he actually calls us to greater. Or, or um, you know, in the beginning, it was not so. Uh, man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Moses allowed us to divorce our wives, but you, what do you say about that? And he goes, well, in the beginning, it was not so. So anyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. He raised the bar. But on the other hand, some ways he opens the gate. Why? One, because he wants to fulfill us. So he raises the bar on those commandments that will make us more virtuous and more fulfilled. He wants to give us life and a life in abundance. And on this end, where he opens a gate and he gets rid of some laws, he, he wants to draw in more people. He wants the Gentiles to come in. He wants to say, hey, the unnecessary things that, uh, that don't really matter anymore, get them out of the way. Kick them, kick them to the side. Don't put roadblocks where we don't need roadblocks. But once people get in, then raise us all up to the fullness of the gospel, to the greatest call by calling people. So um, as Christians, myself, I pray that I could do this. I could be as wide as the church needs to be, as wide, the biggest umbrella as possible to gather the most people in, but then also have the courage to call those people who come in to the greatest, highest virtue. That's, That's the goal. Please stand for our intercessions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and in thanksgiving for his ministry and his style of ministry, which mimics Peter's here and the Acts of the Apostles, um, casting a wide net um, into the world to draw on as many people as possible, that he be affirmed in that ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who feel isolated from the church because of unnecessary rules or roadblocks that family or priests or church ministers have placed before them, that those roadblocks be removed and that they may come, come forward to the church in freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those, even ourselves, who struggle with with the high demands of the gospel, that Jesus raised the bar, and that that we find the grace and receive the grace that God desires to give us, uh, to see the high demands not as burdens that are placed upon us, but as uh, commandments that set us free to become more of who we were called to be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those who have entered the church uh, this Easter, um, the neophytes, those who are baptized, those who came into full communion, uh, that they not fall away and, 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 and go back into previous ways of life, might enter into our community and, and uh, find new life every day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who will be calling forth uh, for this upcoming year to enter RCIA and and for for the inspiration for ourselves to reach out to those who uh, might be called to to enter the church this year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray for all those who have died. They may see your face today. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we place these prayers before you. We are confident you will answer them according to your holy will and for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.